You can eat this for breakfast, brunch, lunch, dinner, midnight snack. In the end, it's just a tortilla with sauce filled with cheese, topped with a little more cheese. Yeah, it's just cheesy goodness. Hello, my name is Alan Delgado. I am the culinary director at Via Alcon Hospitality. We currently have Oshomoco in Greenpoint, a wood-fired Mexican restaurant, and uh, Zilonen, a plant-forward Mexican restaurant. And I am here to show you how to make enchiladas. Enchiladas are super special to me. We used to go to Juarez to a place called Parque Borunda where there was this old little lady with her disco with lard, a bucket of lard and uh, enchilada sauce. I think she was like 90 years old, but she was there every Sunday. So a lot of times we find enchiladas that are very tomato based. I like enchiladas that are very pepper heavy. I just feel like they pack more flavor. The way that I make my enchilas, or I guess the way that my mom used to make them and my grandma and all of that, was with guajillos or uh, mirasol peppers and chile de arboles. A little bit of tomato and uh, some onion. I don't know if there can be a bad sauce. I don't like the tomato base as much, but it's also not wrong. Have it however you want. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. It's still wrong though. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you don't need to peel the onion, because we're gonna blend it and then pass it. You wanna set your oven at 350 or 325. I like a good amount of garlic. You don't even have to peel these either. All right, a little salt, a little oil, and you'll roast it 35 to 50 minutes, depending. Next thing is peppers. Traditionally, it's just arbol and guajillo. Some smokiness from the guajillo. The arbol is there for uh, heat. If you don't like any heat, don't add that. I recommend you do, though. Last year, I was shown this pepper, which is chile costeño, rojo. Traditionally, it doesn't go in the enchilada sauce, but I just like the depth that it adds to it. A little smokiness. De-seed and de-vein. People have told me that it's because it makes the sauce bitter. Some people tell me that it's to make it less spicy, but I just do it because my mom always told me to do it, so <laughs> I gotta fight her. <laughs> she might come back and haunt me in my sleep. <laughs> Well, not always. <laughs> I was a shithead for a long time. If you want to use gloves, that might save you later. When you go to the restroom. <laughs> well, I'll just do it without gloves. Now we just drop it in the water until pliable. We'll leave them in the water until the rest of the stuff is ready. But in the meantime, we will start with our carrots. So the places I would go to, to eat flautas and enchiladas, there was always a little slaw or salad of cabbage, carrots, and then vinegar and oil, which works well with this because this is just cheesy and rich, and so you just need something crunchy and light to kind of balance it out. And you can just cut them however you want. I will go with rounds. All right, we'll cut this down the middle. We're just gonna stuff these inside of the enchiladas. I used to hate Onions in my enchiladas when I was a little kid. I also hated tomatoes and all of that, so. But I grew out of it. And now I love the freshness that it adds to the enchiladas as well, so. You can also have chicken or vegetables if you're a vegetarian. And then the last thing we'll do is cabbage. Just down the middle. Take the core out. Nice little slices. You can also use lettuce if you want. There's really no right or wrong. I feel like that's how most foods should be, honestly. It's whatever you like. Who cares what people think, honestly? <laughs> do whatever makes you happy, and if you're cooking for somebody else, just do it with love and add some salt and you'll be fine. <laughs> All right, we're gonna cut these limes. Everything else is ready to go. So we're just gonna pull the tomatoes, onions, garlic from the oven, marry them with our peppers. It's super easy. Onions are cooked, tomatoes are roasted, and the garlic is nice and golden brown. Start putting all of this in here. I don't add all the tomato at first, just to kind of see, see where it's at. Mm. All right, add some water. And that's just to uh, help it blend a little easier. Let's check it out. Add a little more water. You don't want it too thick, but also you don't want it super watery. A nice in between. I need lots of salt. Mm. 
Now we can pass it. Removing all this chunkiness. It's important to wear a white apron when you do this. <laughs> there we go. Uh, our sauce is ready. We're gonna get our tortillas. If you are using fresh tortillas, let's make sure you let them sit out so they dry a little bit. That way they suck up more of that liquid. If you're using store-bought tortillas, and you don't need to, they're already dry. So. <laughs> At the restaurant, we work with a company called Tamoa. They source from uh, small villages in Mexico. After they grow enough corn to feed their family and their, their community, anything that's left over, they sell to Tamoa, and then they sell it to, to us and other restaurants as well. So it's nice to use heirloom corn to make our tortillas. There's nothing wrong with store-bought tortillas. It's not a bad thing, but I think once you have a fresh tortilla, it kind of ruins the other tortillas for you. A lot of times when you go to restaurants and you have enchiladas, what they do is they pre-roll all of the enchiladas and then they just kind of heat them up in the oven and then pour the sauce on top. I like doing this because then, one, you can smell it as you're cooking it. it, smells great, but the tortilla itself absorbs all that flavor. My mom used to do them, rolled up, but I'm just lazy. <laughs> I just fold them in half. This is a queso chihuahua. I like to use a cheese that brings something to the table and not just lives in the background. You can use queso asadero, quesillo, cheddar. White cheddar, not yellow. You know, honestly, a lot changed when I left El Paso. <laughs> Had my first enchilada with yellow cheese. I still hate that so much. I will eat it, though. I have no standards when I'm like, eating, honestly. Man, this takes me back. As a young kid, we would go to this park, like I said, and this lady would have a just melted lard that she would dip everything in. Just eat it standing up. It was delicious. I serve these family style. Sit around the table with some friends and family and grab as many as you want. It's always funny that as a kid, I never realized how much time and effort goes into making all of this. So thank your mamas or your dad, whoever did the cooking in your house. Top it off with some queso fresco. Again, or whatever you want. <laughs> Maybe some blue cheese would be weird. Let's get weird with it. Just gonna toss the salad in a little oil, some salt, good amount of vinegar, apple cider, our little carrots. Cilantro. Lime juice. And there you have it. It's easy, fast, perfect. Grab a little, a little bit of everything. If you like sour cream, a little sour cream or crema. Lime juice. Mmm. I'm five years old again. It balances out with the onions inside, the crunchiness, the freshness of it, and then a little bit of the salad. Nice. That's something that my mom made for us a lot, and um, she's proud. For the recipe for these enchiladas, click the link below, and I'll be expecting you at Oshomoko or Zilonen. Do you know Taco Bell is the number one authentic Mexican restaurant in the US? <laughs> well, I think a lot of people don't have access to real Mexican food, and so they see that and they're like, this is what you eat, right? It's like, yeah, we, I remember eating crunchy gordita supremes when I was a five-year-old. That's my fondest memory. <laughs> <laughs>